Hey, so how to start selling on Amazon on budget and make money fast? In this video, we're going to break it down for you. And today I have two guests, Marina and Ellie. They're Amazon sellers. They started on budget, made money relatively fast, and they grew their business and it's still growing. So in this video, we're going to share the way to start selling on Amazon on budget, make money fast, and also the story of the girls. They'll share how they did it. In the description, we're going to have the uh, YouTube channel of the girls. They have recently started a channel and I do recommend you to subscribe. And my name is Volva. I'm a seller on Amazon since 2016. I welcome you to this channel. So Marina, can you introduce yourselves and then we will start feel comfortable hello everyone my name is marina i sell on amazon since 2020 so a little bit over two years i started from we both started actually from retail arbitrage then i tried online arbitrage and now we are trying to get a wholesale and that's how we wanted to share a little bit okay cool cool ellie and uh, can you introduce yourself yes then? same here i started almost the same time 2019 mm -hmm. and it was really a sudden decision taken we were just going to vacation it just came across my feed i was looking for ways how to make money fast online and there was a talk money talks that i was following and amazon was one of the reasons that person had made millions and grew his business to it really felt very fascinating how you can just start by reselling because I knew eBay. eBay is something most people are familiar with, but with Amazon to scale it in such a bigger scale and have them ship the items felt very intriguing. So I just jumped in. I went to Walmart and bought many flashlights that they were on sale at the time. It was very nice to see all those cells tickling in while we were on vacation. So I couldn't wait to come back and go for more and look at all the videos online, how to learn the scanning and be more. Because I was afraid in the first to buy those items because you never know if they are going to sell. But when you get into the rhythm, it really multiplied very fast for me. Nice. And you're talking, uh, Ellie, about first way you made money is retail arbitrage on Amazon. Can you girls yes. explain about this a little? Like uh, this is one of the easiest ways to start even with small budget, how does this work, retail arbitrage? Yeah, and I think that the way most people start with, because it's yeah. very fast, you just go to the retail stores you have around and uh, normally you go and look at their sales or that clearance aisle and see if that item is selling in Amazon at the same time or if you're selling in another platform as well. Uh, you can even just list the item while you are in the store. And uh, there were cases when I had the item still in my cart and it was selling. So I was like, okay, so maybe I should just run back and get the rest of them. It's really faster than just doing online arbitrage. So you are buying products retail, let's say in Walmart or in some other shop where physically you can go. Let's say if you're located in the United States, then you can go to a store, physically. check the codes of the product with a special scanner or something about the, like, can, what's the price the on Amazon. In the beginning, you can just use, right, you can use the Amazon app that comes to the Seller Central app. Okay. And uh, you, you can either take a picture if um, because some items don't really show when you scan them. Not all barcodes are entered very uh, in the right way in Amazon. So sometimes if you feel that that's an item, I was very familiar with toys because of my kids. So in some cases, I knew that that Barbie doll is kind of something that my daughter wants. Okay. And that way I was just... Uh, taking a picture of the item or either you can just write the name of the doll or the toy there is also like a microphone button which you can just say it, like barbie doll yoga outfit something and then all the listings in amazon can pop up so you can check if uh, this item is profitable and you can see all the fees Yes, Ali? It was fun to do. The first year was really fun. Like it, it felt a little bit like a hunt when you look for to for toys yeah. and for items to sell. Tiring, but really fun. So you buy the products, you scan them, you see that there's an opportunity for profit after the Amazon fees and everything and the shipping fees, right? Because you need to buy the product, let's say again in Walmart, physically where you're located, and then go and ship it to Amazon. Do we ship it like from our home? You Who comes to pick it up? Like, how does it work? Yes, there are two ways you can normally people start merchant fulfilled if they are used with eBay or other selling platforms. You can just keep the item in your home. You list it as merchant fulfilled. So in that case, you are responsible for sending this item to the customer okay. and the fees 
accordingly are calculated with a different rate. If you have many items, you can always put them all in a box and send them FBA fulfilled by mm. Amazon. And in that way, everything stays in your inventory in Amazon. And when they sell, Amazon is responsible to send these items directly to the customer. I tried to do both. First, actually, I started with uh, Amazon because I didn't want to have too many items here. So I just sent everything to my FBA. And then later on, when I had items that were that needed to be sold fast, like when you are in a seasonal in Q4, for example, you want to get as many of those items sold and shipped fast. There is no time to send it to Amazon and wait for them to get everything checked in. Mm. So there are two ways to do it. So that's retail arbitrage. So Marina, what is your experience with this? First of all, we tried three models. We tried retail arbitrage, online and wholesale. And we can compare one towards another. The pluses yeah. of retail arbitrage, it's fast. It's very, very fast. And it's less amount of mistakes. You basically, you see the product. Let's say we buy this bottle. We see that it's in a good condition. If it's a product with expiration date, we can check expiration date right away, which is an issue if you receive the items to your home. And let's say it could be close to expiration dates, mm -hmm. or it could be damaged, or it could be completely different items. So you see that there are two ways of scanning it. First with Amazon app, which everyone has, it's already like it's free. But another one, we use Inventory Lab. We love, love, love this program. Inventory Lab comes with Scotify 2, which is a scanning app on your phone. So why it's better than Amazon app? Because you can build a lot of host into that and it will be automatically calculated. Let's say we put 50 cents per pound when we ship to Amazon. So from our home to Amazon, you can put, for example, sales tax. If you live in a sales tax state and you don't have tax exemption and you can build a discount, for example, and the app will calculate everything. And also like Elio already said, we have several ways of scanning the items. The first one is a barcode. Almost every product has a barcode. And all we need to do is just basically grab our phone and scan it. Second uh, thing, we can scan a picture of it because sometimes barcode is not in the system on Amazon. We can scan a picture. Third way, like Ellie said, we can type, let's say like Barbie something like on a vacation with mm -hmm. a car. And mm -hmm. let's say we can find it this way if the mm -hmm. first two method didn't work. One other option, if you don't like to type something, especially in the store, it's not so fun just standing and type, mm -hmm. you can uh, vo voice it and it will be found on Amazon. So there are several ways. It's not like one is better than another. Of course, the fastest is would be just scan the barcode. But again, it's just not all the time barcode is in the system. When you just start, you're really afraid, like Ellie also ma mentioned, because you don't know how it will work, how to pack, how all of this. And you can just start like, you know, like $100. You can buy one item because you're in a store. You can try a uh, hundred of mm. different items and buy only one item of each. And then you come home, you need to prep it. Again, prepping it's a little bit another story, uh, like because different products require different preps. You prep mm. it, you put it all away in the box and then you ship it to Amazon. Amazon has partners. We usually ship with UPS. We, they have a discounted rate. You just put everything in the system. You pack it, you put it in the big boxes which you can buy in any store. We, I buy from Walmart usually. And that is it. And you ship it to Amazon. And why we are saying that it is fast and that it is on the budget, again, because you can buy as little. While in online arbitrage, there is minimum for free shipping, let's say, and you need to buy the certain amount for them to ship for free, which of course we want. But with retail, you don't have this problem. You can possibly buy it today and ship it tomorrow. That's why it's very, very fast. If you order something online, it takes some time quite some time to that for them to ship for you to arrive and then you need to combine several orders in order to have volume to ship mm -hmm. so that's why it's very very fast and it's also will be good for your turnaround money which is very important in this business because it's merchandise based business you need to have money in order to make money and in my opinion retail arbitrage is the fastest way to start and the easiest and it's the fastest to understand because it's way easier than online arbitrage i would say in my experience totally you don't need many softwares while in online arbitrage there are other softwares involved because you need eyes on the product it's not like marina said you can see and you can touch the product yourself you can see 
if it's a standard item or it's a bigger item, sometimes you are going to pay more fees if the item is uh, bigger. So it's very easy to judge. So, so you started from this, right? You started separately. You didn't partner up. Yes, you didn't know each didn't other know. probably when you were doing this. And why did you stop doing? Sounds like I never did retail. I only sell private labels since day one. But what made you stop then doing? Sounds like a comfortable model. Like you go, you scan in your free time, you prep in your free time. But uh, what made you stop? Or do you still do that sometimes? Sometimes, how does it work for you girls? For me, it was more because I wanted to grow. With Retail Arbitrage, the first year, my sales were up to 500,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally, you are looking at 25-30% ROI. And it's humanly not possible to do anymore. I was shipping twice a week. So because you need time to go and ship, to fill your car, to bring them back, and then prep them, and then put the stickers and go through the whole pile of items that you bought. Mm -hmm. So doing more than two or maximum three, three a week was not possible for me. And it felt like if I do online arbitrage, then these items, I would save all the time of going to the stores. Everything is going to come to me. So I can still do all the prepping myself and gain some time in that. What I didn't calculate very well back then is that the margins are a little bit smaller in online arbitrage. So I practically ended up doing the same sales and a little bit maybe more sales, but the same profit because the margins, there is more competition in online arbitrage. There are more people that can do it that don't maybe have so many retail stores around them and that's the only way that they can source then i try to save money in another way by instead of prepping myself using a prep center all the items that i buy go directly to a prep center in that way i was saving also time on the prepping and i was able to do a little bit more of revenue but then the cost of prep is gonna go into your profit so it's a little bit of try and error it depends a little bit on what you like to do if you are a person that likes to go to the stores and talk to the managers and make all those connections, by all means, retail arbitrage. There are so many people that do that for years and years and years, and they don't really enjoy online arbitrage. So it uh, really depends on what you are comfortable with and your personality. Can we explain also online arbitrage? We explain retail. I'll try to summarize in like few maybe sentences. We go to a store. Our goal is to sell the products on Amazon, but we physically go to a store, find different products. We can scan, as you said, we can search on Amazon. So we we try to, I guess, again, with some software to find the difference in the price with specific products where we can make money. Yes. And then we buy these products. We go home. We prep them. We put different stickers on them that Amazon gives us. We ship these products to Amazon through different ways. Usually we didn't mention it, but like on Amazon itself, we ask from Amazon to give us labels so we know where to ship. Sometimes people ask, like, where do we right. ship? There's so many they Amazon products. Right? They are related yeah. to your account. Ah, so Amazon the gives code. us these. The code, they yeah. ask you. We put it on the master card and send it to Amazon. That's retail arbitrage, maybe kind of in a few words. And then online arbitrage, how does it work then? Like, can you quickly explain that? Because people heard that, I guess, and maybe those who don't know. Yeah, online arbitrage is basically the same, except you don't go to the stores. You go to okay. basically online store. Let's say you can go to Nike physical outlet right mm -hmm. but you also can go to nike yeah. site and just search clearance and mm -hmm. basically we just open each listing we compare to amazon by title by pictures by <laughs> upc if it's available and we just find a match first and then we see if it's a profitable item we can see also uh -huh. we can look if we can sell this item because you can be gated or you can be restricted in some brands and that is it when you find a match and you find the profit over there, we just place an order. We just add item to the cart and put our address, put our credit card and make them ship to either our home if we prep ourselves or um, if you yeah. want to utilize a prep center, we ship it to the prep. Pretty clear. Yeah. Similar to online on, on, to retail arbitrage, after we kind of after the product lands in our home, we do the same process as with retail arbitrage. We ship, we prep, and all that, yeah. But we find the yeah. products online. That's why there is more competition, as you said, probably because more people can go online and uh, find these things, and not too many people will go, I guess, on foot to different stores. Uh, Marina, and why did you stop retail arbitrage? So Ellie said you like you mentioned you had like pretty big volume and like just physically it was getting a bit so. I'm the person who doesn't like to go to the stores to begin with. Like I'm the one who will order it online 
and even like clothes I do to visit. So I live in the area where it's not much stores around, not much outlets or something like that. So every time I went somewhere, it was like 60 to 70 miles. And of course, if I go that far, I pay for gas, I pay for tow roads. Mm -hmm. Of course, I source like all day. I literally worked like 12 hours and that's that's exhausting. And plus, since you need those stores to be restocked, so basically on Monday, you go all the way left 70 miles. And let's say on Tuesday, you pack. On Wednesday, I go 70 miles like up north, let's say, and like so on. It, it was a little bit exhausted for me. Yeah, I wanted to grow the business because it felt more like a job because you basically do everything. I wanted to create system to hire some people, prep center, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I just moved to online arbitrage because I, I just didn't want to go over there. And I understand everyone who would say, uh, because I hear that a lot. People say like, oh, we don't want to go to the stores. We don't want like retail arbitrage to do retail arbitrage. But I would still recommend to start this way because even you would do it like for a week, for a month, it would teach you so much faster because with online arbitrage, it's so many things together. You need to find promo or discounts or clearance first. You need to know where to source, what to source. You need to know how to combine cashbacks on the sites, cashbacks on your credit cards how to find discounts codes like all of this it's million extensions and different things and that kind of takes a lot of time just to learn just to learn how to uh, gift cards and gift mm -hmm. cards and when you combine all of this that's how profit is made because a lot of people have mm -hmm. false idea that they will find something for let's say three dollars and they will sell it for thirty dollars and it will be like you know hundred 200 percent ROI. Unfortunately, yeah. those uh, Wild West time on Amazon is already gone. You you are not gonna find those guys. Or if you will, sometimes you might, but it's not gonna last. It's gonna be like clearance item which is not gonna be back. It's not mm -hmm. like some something you can constantly find all the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in this case, you need to learn how to combine all of those gift cards, cashbacks, discounts, how to find those in order to make like you know 20 percent, 30 percent down to the price, and that's how you make profit that takes quite some time and plus if you are not familiar with amazon first that's another learning curve if you're not familiar how to prep how to ship that's another one and it's all at once that's why i really recommend everyone to try retail arbitrage just for a while you will learn way 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 faster because all you need to do let's talk about like stores we can share some stores like ellie and i actually liked different stores so what you need to do is just basically you come to the store and you can just go to clearance aisle you don't need or sale aisle you don't need to think like oh what kind of product because a lot of stores they're huge you cannot scan the whole store it just like you just go to clearance at first and just scan the clearance and that is it you don't need to think too much how to combine all of this and the stores i loved to do big lots I loved big lots, especially if they do 15, 20, 25 percent sometimes. That's the time to go. And at that time, I just went through all big lots on my area, like and not my area, too. So I just put discount on inventory lab. All of this, it will be calculated automatically. And I scanned big lots. That was one of my favorite store. And another one I really liked Marshalls, TG Max. I liked Ollie's. Ollie's is is a good store if you're on the East Coast. They they are not presenting on the west coast on the west coast it's gonna be grocery outlet that's a good one to scan ellie it's, what about you what for retail arbitrage you're saying because you say yes. west coast. okay okay ellie, you like, can do them of course online arbitrage you can do those stores as well ah, but okay. uh, for retail arbitrage as marina said i liked actually all the ones that uh, marina said except all this we don't have any all this here yeah. uh, i'm Chicago, we unfortunately, mm -hmm. in all the groups we had, there were people sharing their bolos and uh, how nice all this is. But no, I have to travel like 60 miles to get one. Mm -hmm. So uh, my alternative to that was actually five below. Now they even have 10 below. So they have grown their inventory. But at the time, it was only up to five. And they have a lot of toys, like brand toys, you, you name it, like uh, Marvel, Spider-Man, Star Wars. All of them are very profitable. And if you compare the prices normally, even with wholesale, they were much cheaper because the way they buy, they buy it in bulk and mm -hmm. there is 
let's say five of the Spider-Man toy and five of the Iron Man toy and mm -hmm. five of the Panther one. And actually the Spider-Man is the one that makes money more on Amazon. So you don't have to buy the whole box like you would if you were doing wholesale. By that, you just go and you just pick up the ones that actually are making the profit at the moment. And uh, I have about four or five, five pillows next to me. They're, the managers are great there. They are very helpful. So that was actually, let's say maybe 60% of my inventory back then. I wanted to add a couple of more. If you live next to outlets, the way outlets like build in some cities, it's a lot of stores, different brands. Let's say Nike, Adidas, Coach, like you name it. It's like a bunch of stores all together. And if you live close by, that could be wonderful. There is very good outlets in Orlando. Orlando, unfortunately, is like one and a half, two hours away from me. And those outlets, a lot of time, they have limits. Let's say they have limits, 30 pairs of Nike shoes a day. So you can only come back tomorrow. And if I live so far, I'm not going to drive that far every day. But if it's close to you, that's another option because outlets are wonderful uh, way also to buy inventory. And I also wanted to add that there are also another way you can do this business like Ellie mentioned that she met a lot of managers in the stores and you can do the same you can just say hey I can help you to get rid of the items which is sitting on your shelves if you need to discount something just call me and I'll come I'll scan and I can grab something and don't hesitate to do that because you guys have the same interest you have interest to buy cheaper and managers have the goals to get rid of items a lot of time they can just not even put them on the shelf and put those stickers which is very annoying to peel off they can just put it for you on the back you just come you scan and then you just grab the whole the palette which is way faster than scan all over the store you know so don't hesitate to build those connections because that could be very valuable. And every time they need to discount something on something new arrive, they can give you a call and say, hey, your inventory came, do you want to come? And you mm -hmm. say, yes, yeah, sure. So that's a good method. But let's talk about wholesale now. <laughs> okay, so you, you're saying now you want to start or you're in the process of doing wholesale. What's that? How does this work? Talking about uh, wholesale, there is a traditional way to do wholesale and there is uh, something we discovered lately and that we are trying and we're actually very happy with. So the traditional way is basically you contact either distributor or brands. A distributor is the representative of several brands. So they buy in huge bulks and they sell in small bulk to you and then you sell it to Amazon. So you can contact them, you open the account, you submit your reseller certificate, you need to have a company in order to do wholesale, that's 100%. And uh, then they give you the catalogs and catalogs is basically contains titles, UPC codes, prices, prices sometimes cheaper if you buy more and shipping if it's not close to you. Let's say if they ship from another state, it's going to be edge shipping. Usually with a lot of retails, like let's say you, you buy from Walmart for online arbitrage, it's like, oh, for $35, if you buy on $35, the shipping is free. It's not like that with wholesale. You pick the items you like and you add the shipping cost to it. And here's the problem. So yeah, you find the match on Amazon the same. The methods are always the same. You find the match on Amazon, you calculate the profit, and if you like it, you buy it. So that's the problem. So you can just scan the whole catalog and you can find let's say three items which is profitable but in order to save on shipping you need to buy a pallet because let's say if they will ship several boxes to you especially if it's a heavy item like let's say toothpaste it's going to be very heavy so if it's like in the boxes you can pay basically like hundred dollars per for shipping for several boxes or you can buy a pallet and pay like two, three hundred dollars for a pallet, but it's gonna be a lot more. But if it's only three items, do you really want to buy that much? And that was the most problem. The second way to do wholesale is do it locally, which is kind of hybrid of retail arbitrage and wholesale. You can find wholesales in your area. You can just Google like wholesale and let's say whatever you live. I live in Tampa, like wholesale Tampa, distributor Tampa, grocery distributor Tampa and so on. And you can find someone locally and you either can pick up the items, which is like you. That's another advantage for you 
to save on shipping because other guys from you know different states they will have to pay for shipping while you don't so mm -hmm. it's going to be cheaper the final price for you per item so you can drive over there and pick it up or sometimes they also have delivery that's the second method and the third method what we try we found one company the name of this company is Yecom Solution we also have an interview on our channel with a CEO mm -hmm. we will leave it in the description the, with the CEO of, of this company the way this method works it's basically they have catalog which is already was matched with Amazon so that's already like this is a supplier this is a supplier price this is the ASIN on Amazon and that's the profit let's say and of course profit fluctuates because you know it's the market the prices could go up and down so we have access to the, they call it seats so we have access to those seats and we just go through it we see what we are interested in how profitable it is and then we do the purchase and we can do purchase they, they require some minimum items to purchase but it's very small minimum compared to other wholesales compared to traditional way because usually it's like one item minimum it could be six it could be 12 it could be 18 but i didn't see more than that it's really small minimum talking about wholesales okay but how does it work like we sell yeah. it on amazon in bulk in one per item we also send to our home to prep it again we need to the no. prepping or is there well, or does the supplier with traditional, to the pre prepping with the traditional wholesale they can ship either to your house which is actually a problem for some distributors because they could say oh we need a commercial address and we've been there they like no we don't ship to residentials you need to have you know and sometimes they like you need to have a dog so it's not like they require only a commercial address they need also a dog for the pallets yes interesting and in this case you you need to have a warehouse so anyway the way uh ecom solution works you basically you place the regular orders like just add to the cart and place the order and of course pay invoices and then ecom solution basically combine all of orders of all of us because it's like ellie me and other people who sell on Amazon and we all place the order. That's why it allows them to keep lower prices because they order still in bulk because it's many of us. And mm -hmm. we have ability to have better prices and buy small amount. So it's kind of, and the best part of it, they prep. They prep for us. There is a fee for that, but it's so small fee compared to preps, which we both had. They charge $600 a month for prep our items. And basically every time they arrive, they just handle it for us. They make sure the expiration dates over there is good. They prep it, they label it for us and ship it for us like using our through our account and that's what we are doing now like as a wholesale that's what we choose we are happy so far it's just i just want to, for everyone to be clear the biggest profit out of all of these models it's probably private label but i we cannot say about private label because we never been there we don't have private label but out of those three it's the best profit is in in, in retail arbitrage that's like you can easily find something like 50 70 100 percent ROI, you can really do it. You can you can earn like really good money. Like it's a lot of work, but it's good money too. And it's fast start. Then, then it goes online arbitrage because you have to remember when you shop locally, you compete to only people who live locally too. So only to people who live at the same area. When you buy something online, you compete to the whole world because everyone can buy online from any country and sell on Amazon. So that's why it's very high competition and sometimes price because of that tank and sometimes you need to take a loss. That happens too. I just want to be honest and uh, for you guys not to have like all those bubbles and like have like, a picture of Lamborghini on the second day you started on Amazon. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not how it works in reality. So, mm. and wholesale is the smallest profit out of wow. th those three models but it's more hands-off at least mm -hmm. for us what we do now because you can order in bulk we don't spend time on re returns because we know with online arbitrage it's going to be some damages something like sent wrong you need to return it you need to make labels it's also time and uh, with wholesale it's basically we pick we pay and that's it and then we reorder when it's out of stock that is basically the process do you need to work on the listings 
things on Amazon? No, there are ready listings that you find, right? With wholesale. No, that's yes, that is private label. You can, if you want, you can. You can optimize. You can add pictures. Mm -hmm. But I think if it's not your listing, can you really? You can always advertise on the listings, so you can put them in the umbrella under advertising, and that's why your listing is going to show up in somebody else's listing. For example, mm -hmm. let's go to the Barbie doll. You see that one person has a similar listing on the doll, but it includes one more item. You are only selling the Barbie doll. So you advertise it putting their ASIN. So it shows there that the person that doesn't need that extra item can just very well buy yours. So you get some extra sales that way. You can always create your own listing if you do the bundles though, which is another thing that we have tried. <laughs> yes, <laughs> There are Absolutely. many, many ways. It all depends on how much budget you have. If you don't have too much budget, then retail arbitrage is the one that's going to give you the most ROI. So you mm -hmm. can have the snowball starting and uh, get the profit. So you, then you can move to another model when you have more money and less time, let's say. Or when you have more money and you don't want to spend time and you want to do something else altogether, then wholesale might be the model. That's what we want now. We have other projects with Marina that we're working on. So we wanted to free up some of our time in order to pursue them. And wholesale, it's looking like it might fit very well for us since the prep is being handled so when the items arrive from the suppliers marina said damaged now that i still i'm working with my prep center i am the one that need to call them and say well you short shipped me this item arrived wrong this was damaged so i'm responsible to do all that correspondence and this time consuming but with ecom they are the ones that handle all of that area as well i actually wanted to add another thing like we tried and like kelly said i completely agree that it depends what you like if you like shopping some people love shopping they just go like you know to the store then they're like yeah. oh like i found something like you know the treasure can you imagine how much it cost it was one box and now i can sell it for 30 they're just like so excited i feel it through the screen I, it just was not us we wanted like you know and uh ellie has family kids and you know like sometimes time it's more value than earn more money it, it depends what age you are, how much money you yeah. you have and all that stuff. And I, uh, talking true. about money, a lot of time you can just, you know, like with wholesale, if you just start and you want to start with wholesale, it is possible. But first of all, you need to have bigger budget, way bigger budget. It's a lot of items. If you want to, to sell brand name items, you need to get ungated. And that takes, again, time and money. To get ungated and then you buy in bulk if you're not familiar with amazon again that is very likely you will do mistakes and those mistakes will cost you more because if you buy one item and it costs ten dollars okay mm -hmm. you bought it and you bought it wrong okay you lost uh, ten dollars but it's not that much but if you bought let's say 100 items and they cost like ten dollars that's already one thousand dollars you lost if you did the wrong choice and when i started i had around like seven eight thousand dollars which i didn't put right away i just wanted to to test i just put let's say 200 then 300 and then when i saw how it works yeah i'm like i'll add more but like there is no way i would put in like seven eight thousand just on something i don't even understand what it is but over time again like my credit score back then was not very good my credit history was not good so i operated basically on only those money but over time i got on gated in many brands i invested all the profit i made back to the business i also got several credit cards and over time again they raised your limits on the credit cards and from that seven eight thousand i grew to hundred thousand uh, like in in money i can put in the business so it's like i can buy on hundred thousand a month right now no problem from seven eight thousand i grew that and again it takes time i don't want to promise anyone anything now like overnight it takes time because it took it's like i'm in amazon like for two and a half years and i like build it all the time like to be there where I am right now but it's possible it's possible and uh, we just wanted to show how it is and i wanted also to add that you also can create bundle this is kind of like private 
playable again on the budget. So mm -hmm. what you can do is actually you can uh, pair some item. So you kind of find out find out that this is a best seller and this is a best seller. And that, let's say this toothpaste and people somehow buy it together. You can look at this uh, like on Amazon as well. Like there is data what people buy together. And again, when we sell something on separate listings, we pay fee every single time we sell. But mm -hmm. if we sell something on bundle, yeah, the fee will be bigger because it's like uh you know bigger item and uh, probably more weight because of that but we don't pay fee three times we pay it one time mm, so nice. what you can do you can basically uh buy those three items create a listing create it under your name like under your brand name and it's gonna be like bundle to toothpaste and one you know face wash and that is your listing nobody can jump on it and it's name brand which is like people like brand names items people familiar with them people buy them and when they see value in your bundle they buy it from you the only thing i think i was missing you need to add something else you need to add for example some filler item you need to sell let's say no name toothbrush with your name on it let's say it would be like alien marina let's say our brand on amazon like the name is like alien marina right so if we just put those three items anyone can jump on the listing because like nothing would stop them but if we add some kind of filler item which is like let's say toothbrush with alien marina logo on it meaning like it's private label we branded it right so we can sell it as our brands even it contains contains like several brand names products and if anyone has interest just like drop a comment we can talk about that in another video but yeah that's also we tried we tried it all do you have anything more to add to that uh, topic of the video of like starting on budget you're making money fast on amazon we talked retail arbitrage which is the fastest way with really good profits easy to start quick turnover then we had online arbitrage which is also kind of easy to start you can do it all from your computer and that's also a way to make money and the least in a way profitable way again it depends per item per seller yes but generally huh it's maybe wholesale but it's more hands-off it requires more budgets to start not necessarily you can you come solutions but it's still yeah. bigger a bigger budget that online arbitrage you yeah, still need you like 15, 20 dollars, a thousand at least to start. Well, yeah, that's that's a big, pretty big amount. Like I know online arbitrage probably is like a few thousand bucks or like up yeah. to a thousand, right? Just to start. Absolutely. Yes, then retail also. You can go to a store, you can buy even one, two products and start with that. Yeah. All right. Do you have anything else to add, girls, before we wrap up the video? Mm -hmm. If you have any interest to any topics we briefly talked about today, just drop a comment and we can create another video. We are happy to. We also have our own channel. We put videos over there. Yeah, the link will be in the description. Yes, we will and, leave it there. Uh, yeah, let us know what you are interested in and we would be happy to create a content about that. We are open books. Mm. That's great. That's great. Thank you, girls. And I uh, hope to see you again on the channel. Good luck to you with your channel as well. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.